Hey there, Star Citizen fans. Welcome back to the channel. It is the Alien Day at the IAE. Lots of alien ships for sale, some rare ones. But I want to start off with a bit of a teaser that I missed, that I only caught when I saw them tweet about it. Here we have CIG saying, is that the Banu Merchantman in the background, referring to the Jax McCleary clip of him in Pyro. The the and uh, I had to basically pause to see, and yes, it was. So uh, there it is. I caught the image, and I know it's kind of tough to see. It's in the background. It's kind of uh, behind the mist and fog. But that over there is the wing of the Banu Merchantman. It's huge. It is big. And if you're wondering why everyone's so excited for the ship, I'll get to that towards the end. But let's watch the clip and uh, take a look at it. Also, we learn a bit more about Pyro in this clip. There was some solar flare. He had to crash on some planet. Let's watch the segment. It finally happened. I got hit with one of those famous pyro solar flares, and the cutter has frankly, well, not been herself. But by good fortune of the Banu god of backwaters, I found this marketplace. So some hints about what's going to be happening in Pyro. He was hit by a solar flare and he's flying the cutter and the cutters had some kind of problems, engine problems, which forced him to land. So we can imagine this is something which happens fairly often in Pyro. Is it at regular intervals? Does it happen sporadically or spontaneously without any warning? I think it makes for interesting gameplay, which will force you to hide or crash or force you to crash or do things in Pyro, which you don't want. Interesting. So let's take a look. Ah, my good man. Do you happen to have a power coupling for a... Ooh. So he peers over and he sees what looks like some Vandal weapons and uh, Vandal engine parts over there. Uh, I'll drop a link to this entire clip so you can watch it for yourself. But uh, basically, Pyro looks like it'll be a place to buy a whole bunch of things which will not be found in more uh, regulated and secured systems, more of illegal stuff. Uh, a lot of people waiting for Pyro to drop so they can just stop playing again because they're bored with the current uh, extent of what the systems have right now. But yeah, exciting to see what they're showing there. And uh, definitely the Banu Merchman looking huge in the background over there. Let's get to that now by taking a look at what's for sale. If you are new, let me run you through what is going on here, beginning with, I guess, Aopa, which is the Gion Scout, which is the cartoon. The name is Cartoon L. Um, it's a light fighter. Uh, this was the first alien ship actually sold by uh, CIG, and I like the look, I like the aesthetic, I bought this, but I'll be honest with you, I fly the Anvil Arrow a lot more than I do this ship. Now, it has been improved a bit in the past where uh, the wings don't break off as easily, but the problem is when you lose an engine on this ship, it's all over the place, you can't control it, very difficult to fly. But otherwise, uh, I love the look of it, and I, I know they'll balance it more in the future, but I just don't use it much personally. Uh, the Nox, I, I have a couple of these already. I have a black one, I have a silver one, my favorite little speeder. And uh, the Santok Yai, now this is basically the alien version of the Sabre. Armaments are kind of the same. This will most likely be a bit more nimble than the Sabre, uh, so they overlap a lot. Basically, if you like the alien aesthetic, Go for it. 220 bucks is priced right. Uh, they're a bit more expensive, the alien ships, because of an alien tax, we call it. Uh, but it's, if you like the alien looks, then why not? Moving on to the Banu manufacturers. We have a couple of good ones over here, starting with the Banu Defender. Now, as far as ships in this class go, no other ship will give you an interior and a bed for logout like the Defender has over here. Uh, it used to have these awesome hit scan weapons that were removed because the ship was just too OP. Uh, the arms break off kind of easily if they are nudged or rammed into, <coughs> which causes you to lose a weapon. But ag again, as far as interiors go, uh, nothing comes close to what this ship offers. And for that, it's a huge selling feature for me. Otherwise, as far as uh, combat effectiveness, there are other ships which do it better, but you're paying for the alien aesthetic plus the interior if you are purchasing the ship. And here we have the ship I spoke about in the beginning, which is the Banu Merchantman. Now, the ship was sold initially in concept 10 years ago, <laughs> I want to say. Is it 10 years? It must be like at least seven or eight years. It was one of the very, very early concepts. And the thing is, they didn't have a clear roadmap or understanding of exactly what the Banu 
uh, will look like as far as technology goes. And so the ship's been going through countless iterations, but they finally have it down. They have, they're finally going through the final process. The ship's coming along, and uh, it's just massive. It's as big as an Idris. So at six fifty, the price has gone up again. This was initially sold for two fifty, or was it even cheaper? I think it was around two fifty, and I wouldn't be surprised if this goes up to seven fifty, even eight hundred when it goes flight ready, just because of how big it is and what it does offer in terms of cargo. It is an end game ship. This is what you'll be grinding for to get to that cargo end game, apart from the hull D or hull E. So uh, definitely an in-game ship, uh, which is why the price tag is also very expensive there. So don't feel pressured. This is definitely something that you'll be able to earn in-game. It's just going to be a while, and that's how it should be. Uh, too many people jumping into expensive ships, getting buyer's remorse. Don't get caught up in that. And that is all that's coming us from the Banu. Let's jump to Esperia, which is my favorite of the bunch. Now, Esperia has made some very cool vehicles, uh, replicas. The blade, I think it's cool. Uh, not the best, but it is all right. Uh, the glaive, let's talk about that for a second. Now, to get the glaive, you must finish the Vandal Swarm. It's a game mode from your launcher. You can play it, and you have to go through waves of uh, shooting other ships. Once you finish that, you get the distinct honor <laughs> to spend money on the game. I know, it's weird. Uh, so if you manage to go through a couple of waves proving you are combat proficient, you get the honor of spending $350. So I have this ship. I bought it at Concept. Very cool. I love the design. But be aware of one more thing, that the design you see here is not is possibly not what you're going to get in the game uh, because the Van Duel actually have an updated skin coming. All the Vandal ships have been upgraded to look like proper Vandal ships now. This was designed before they had the design language of what Vandal ships will look like. So I'm not sure if they'll allow you to keep this skin or you'll have an option of switching between the newer look and the older look. I, I don't know. But be aware if you do buy this, there may be a possibility that this switches out for the newer Vandal skins and you lose this. Uh, perhaps comment from CIG if you're watching would be helpful for us to understand. Ah, the Prowler. All right. At $440, she is a pricey one. But this is my favorite looking ship in the game. It's black. It's stealthy. It has these awesome Gravlev engines at the bottom because the ship's going to be able to kind of skim the ground at some point eventually. But if I can count on one hand, which I can, how many times I've used this as an actual dropship, it's not much. Uh, it was an awesome heavy fighter until it was kind of nerfed a little bit. I'm hopeful that at some point they, they allow us to have some kind of modularity and I can put a bed in there or something because design-wise, well, chef's kiss, I love it. But if you want a dropship, there are cheaper and better options out there. Cutlass Steel being one, uh, priced way lower. So if you want a dropship, maybe not. If you just love the aesthetic and uh, like the way it looks, go for it. Pricey, again, Alien tax, but uh, one of my favorite designs in the game, which brings us to the Talon and the Talon Shrike. Now, the Shrike is the missile variant. Uh, this is the light fighter variant. Cool ship. Love the cockpit uh, ejection sequence of that. The missile variant, I had melted it down. I just was not using it much. But if you do like missiles, then maybe it's worth a look. Uh, again, not the best fighters, but definitely up there, very close to the arrow. And moving on to the Gatak Raylan, which is uh, one of the more recent additions to the concept sales that they had recently, which is a mid-range cargo hauler. Now, we don't have much on the ship other than what they showed us in the concept sale itself. Uh, we know cargo's on the outside of it. We know it's probably going to be heavily shielded. It is beefy. I love the aesthetic of it. I got one because of the price. Uh, for 200 bucks for what it does is good. It is not the best hauler for cargo. There are better ones out there. Freelancer, Max coming close. And obviously the Hull series carry a lot more cargo. But again, alien aesthetic. If you like it, why not go for it? But otherwise, if you just want pure cargo, there are better options out there for you. And is that it? Yeah, that is all I have for you on the alien ship. So if you have more questions about the alien ships, feel free to post below. And uh, if you enjoy my content, as always, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll uh, sign off by taking another look at that massive Banu Merchantman. Cannot wait to get that out any, any month now. <laughs> There's fingers crossed it does happen. I'll catch you later.